this is my failed NGF. Uh, the 1.8 engine blew itself up. Um, I'll have to show you that over the back there. So I've been taking this engine apart just to see what failed in it uh, and also to find out what the mounts are like for the uh, gearbox, things like that. So hopefully you'll be able to see where the power unit's going to sit. So I've been removing a few um, bits and pieces out of here. I'll see if I can do a running total of all the bits that I'm taking out to see how much lighter the vehicle's going to be. Um, it's not a bad model. So it's got all the normal bits and pieces. It's a little bit tired in places, but that's to be expected. It's an x reg so. Um, so I'll have a look at the boot. Park next to my other project car. Have a look in the boot. It's got the tools in there at the moment. And you can see the engine compartment there. ECU. Fuel lines are cut off as well. And it was that piston there that had hit its valves. And the belt's okay. This belt's absolutely fine. So it was a brand new belt, but the pulley that tensions the belt up, um, the bolt was loose on. So it had slipped off its tensioner and cams had slipped and then the valves met the pistons, which isn't a good idea. So that's roughly where the power unit's gonna sit. So that's the gearbox there. So it's going to mount up to the gearbox. So I'm going to take this engine block off. When I take that engine block off, I can then measure up on the end of the engine block how I'm going to mount it to the gearbox. It should be quite easy because you've got these plates on here as well. So it's quite a small end piece to this to marry up to the gearbox. So the idea is to put the motor in here, the power unit in here, against that gearbox and hold it onto these engine mounts as well so I'll make a bracket to take it onto the engine mounts and then the boot will become the battery compartment for the small batteries so this will be the uh, round town batteries and then at the front then at the front somehow I'll put some batteries in there and they'll be the long range batteries just to keep the weight distributed So the one thing about converting this to electric from petrol is that the vacuum pipe um, won't be coming from the engine anymore. So it would have to have its own vacuum pump on it. So the vacuum pump will go in here somewhere as well. It'll be an electric vacuum pump that will run off of its own auxiliary battery. So I know that I've got plenty of hours of runtime on that auxiliary pump. So I've always got vacuum. So it's a servo assisted brake. Also what I've been doing is sorting out my little workshop. It's only a small space, but it's ideal to do a lot of the work on. I rebuilt the Vector engine in here as well. So um, there's plenty of space for doing all sorts of work. So I've got myself a little workbench, or maybe myself a little workbench with all my tools on it. So that should be nice and easy. Uh, this is the head of the MGF and it looks okay from this side but if you have a look on the other side where is it that's one you can see where the uh, pistons met the valves and they disagreed and also there's a tiny crack just in the middle of the frame there so all the water came through tablets coming up all the water came through and we're sitting in the sump so when I drained the sump um, water came out first and then the oil because obviously oil floats on top of water uh, and this is the culprit this one here so the tensioner for the cam belt decided to come adrift and uh, because the bolt was loose on it so the belt's absolutely fine but that had slipped off so one bolt caused a catastrophic failure so what else have I got in here 
So I've got my solar panel up there, 50 watts. And that's running down to this box here. That's from Le Mans. And that does say 12.6 volts. It says the solar panel is charging the battery as well. Uh, the load's on as well. So in here I've got a load of fuses, one for each battery. And then I've got outputs, like six outputs. And this one actually goes off to the lighting circuit. So if I trace that one through, there's this light switch. I've got a number of lights that come on and they run from that battery pack. Plus I can plug my clock charger in to that battery pack as well, um, to the solar panel. So the solar panel charges this and also I can use 300 watts of mains in it. So I use that for my Dremel and things like that. So I'm trying to use solar as much as possible. So hopefully you found this interesting. If you have, please hit the like down the bottom and the subscribe as well. Feel free to leave any comments down below. Thank you for watching.